So this video is to go over the slope-intercept form of a linear equation. Slope-intercept form literally means you need the slope and the y-intercept to be able to write the equation. Or if given the equation, the equation is going to give you that information, the slope and the y-intercept. So slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b, and it's the relationship between the x and the y value of every point on that line. So um, m, which is always the number kind of being multiplied by x, it's called a coefficient, is your slope, okay? Versus the b value, which is being added or subtracted, it's a constant, is your y-intercept. Now remember, y-intercept is always a point on the y-axis, okay, so it's where it crosses the y-axis, and because it's always a point, it will have both an x and a y value. On the y-axis, that is where x is zero, so your point will always be zero comma whatever that b value is. So let's do a couple practice problems. Starting from a graph, if you're given a graph, and in this case, this graph is giving you both intercepts, both the x and the y-intercept. You can write the equation in slope-intercept pretty quickly. Remember, slope-intercept is y equals mx plus b, where you need to find both the slope, m, and the y-intercept, which is the b value. So the first thing to identify, I think, quickly is the x and the y-intercept. So you have the x-axis. So this point, negative 1, 0, would be the x-intercept. And you have the point where it crosses the y-axis, 0, 4, which is your y-intercept. Key mistake would be to use the wrong one. Remember, in slope-intercept, you want the y-intercept. So that would be the point 0, 4, which means your b value is a positive 4. The other thing we need is the slope. And the slope from a graph can easily be found as rise over run. Rise would be, going, would be a positive going up to the right, but it also could fall or drop, which would be a negative slope if it's going down to the right. I can see that my graph is going up to the right, so I know my slope is going to be positive. So I'm going to identify two points. doesn't really matter which two points I use. So I'm going to use this point and the y-intercept. And I'm going to count the rise, how far it goes up. So that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So that would be a rise, a positive, up 8 units. For my run, 1, 2 it runs two units to the right. So my slope would be a positive eight rise divided by a run of two. Eight divided by two reduces to four. So now I have everything I need to write my equation. Y equals M, which I found to be four, X plus B, and we found four to be a positive four. This would be the equation in slope-intercept form of this linear graph. Here's another graph, but what you notice is they do not give you the intercepts, either of them. So I can still, I still have to eventually find both the slope and the y-intercept, my m and b value. m, slope, I can still do pretty quickly using that idea of rise over run. So for here, um, my rise, well, remember we talked about rise would be positive up to the right, or if it's negative down to the right, it would actually be a fall, which is what I have in this case, it's going down to the right. So my fall, I drop two, and because it's a fall or a drop, it has to be negative, and that's key to remember. Then my run, one, two, three. So my slope would be a fall of two divided by a run of three. Negative two divided by three is reduced already. I can't 
reduce it anymore. So I'm good to go. To get to the y-intercept, I could do one of two things. I could use my slope and continue my line until I run into the y-intercept. So I could go, okay, I'm gonna go fall two more, run three more, and I could keep doing this. But if I go this way, down two over three, what happens is I would run into the x-axis or x-intercept. So instead, I could go up or rise to, but if I do that, I would have to make sure I run to the left. And this would eventually run into the y-axis, but I would have to extend and be really careful of where my um, tick marks are on my graph. So instead, because I could easily make a mistake there, I'm gonna find B algebraically by starting with point slope form. Um, point slope form is just another version of the equation of a linear function. And it's y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And the nice thing about point slope is that you don't have to have the point of the y-intercept. You can literally have any point on the graph. So I'm going to use the point that's already been identified on my graph which is at 6, 4. And I already found my slope to be negative 2 thirds. So my point, I can label as x1, y1, and I'm ready to fill out point slope form. So y minus my y value from the point, 4, equals my slope of negative 2 thirds times x minus my x value from the point of 6. This would be point slope form. Now I want to convert this to slope intercept. To do so, you would get rid of the parentheses by distributing the slope. Distributing is multiplication, so that would be negative 2 thirds x plus um, 2 thirds times 6. 6 divided by 3 would be 2 times 2 is Four. It is positive because the negative times the negative is a positive. So then my next step would be to move the negative 4 over to get y by itself. And I'm going to add it. And I'm going to add it to the other 4 because those are like terms. So I end up with y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 8. And that would be my slope intercept form. So now I'm going to do or write the equation of a linear function in slope intercept form y equals mx plus b but this time instead of a graph i'm given a table you could also be given two points so you could be given the same points from the table negative two eight and one negative one it doesn't really matter which one if you're given two points you can easily make a table x y Okay, so I need to identify my slope and y-intercept. Remember, y-intercept would be the point where x is 0. And what I notice is that my table doesn't give me an x value of 0. So I know from the previous problem, I'm going to have to use that point slope form because I am given any other point. So I'm going to go ahead and find a slope because you would need it for both point slope and slope intercept form. So my slope, instead of rise over run, I could graph the points and use rise over run, but you can also use change of y over change in x. So for my y's from eight to negative one, that would have to be to subtract nine units. From negative one to negative 10 would also be to subtract nine units. So that would be my change in y. For my change in x, from negative two to positive one would be to add three, and same from one to four would be to add three. So my change in x is a positive three. Negative nine divided by three reduces to negative three, which would be my slope. And then I'm gonna use point slope, because again, I'm given a whole bunch of points, but none of them are slope, the, y-intercept. So I'm going to choose any point and I want to use for 
negative 10. So this will be my x1 and y1 value. So for point slope, I'm gonna say y minus my y1 value, negative 10, is equal to my slope that I found to be negative three times x minus my x1 value of four. Minus a negative is a positive, so I can rewrite that as y plus 10. I'm gonna distribute the slope of negative three, multiplying it in, negative three times x is negative three x, and negative three times negative four, negative negative is a positive, three and four multiply to be 12. I'm gonna subtract 10 from both sides, and I get y equals negative three x plus two, which would mean my slope intercept form with a slope of negative three and a b value of two or y intercept of zero two. Thank you for watching. Hope this helped.